Bear markets are like diarrhea, quick and dirty. Prices fall quick and dirty. So said George Lane, the father of highly popular stochastic oscillator. There's another saying in Wall Street, markets climb up the staircase but fall down the elevator shaft. Why do markets fall faster than they rise? And should you be averaging your long positions in falling markets? This is the crux of my video. I'm Vijay Bambuani. I've been trading these markets since 1986. And through my videos, I want to help my viewers take better and more informed trading decisions. Let's dive right in. What do markets have to encounter on the way up? When the markets are rising in a bull phase, number one, they have to deal with finite or limited resources of the bulls. You see, for the market to go up, you need to be constantly buying. And everybody has finite or limited amount of money. Even the richest men in the world, Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, will have a finite amount of money beyond which they cannot spend. So limitation of resources is number one. Number two, the second pressure that the markets have to face while going up is selling from existing investors. Look, the markets are a zero sum game. If there is a buyer, there has to be a seller. If there is somebody who feels the market still has to go higher, there must be somebody who would say this far and no further. So at all rallies, there are delivery based sellers. So they have to the bulls have to absorb all the selling while they go up. Number three, and this is uh, uh, something that you need to know. The markets on the way up have to face the force of gravity. Now, before you can say, hey, Vijay, prices are inanimate objects and therefore gravity does not apply. Gravity will only apply to a tangible object. Fair enough. Google search center of gravity oscillator and you'll be surprised. Yes, there is actually a study on how much gravitational forces, quasi gravitational forces will impact the stock prices. So on the way up, markets basically encounter these forces. On the way down, what really happens? First, the bulls run out of money and they stop buying in large quantities. The bears sense that. All right. When the prices are going sideways, the bears who've taken a lot of beating by short selling the markets are quiet for a while. And then once they venture out and start shorting in small bits and pieces, the prices start to come down. When no support is coming from the bulls, the bears get aggressive. Gravity also pulls the prices down and bears hammer the prices even faster. Bulls, remember, have run out of money, limitation of finite resources, which is why, why going up, the market has to face three forces or three adversities while coming down. All these three adversities pull down the market in double quick time, which is why declines are always sharp, always fast and always vicious. Now, <clears throat> should you average? Should you be buying? Now, if you're a long term investor with a multi year time frame or multi decade time frame, maybe buying and averaging is your cup of tea. But as a trader, I would not suggest so. Now, being a 360 degree worldview trader, you would also want to know the reason why. All right. So I'm going to share my thoughts on the behavioral aspect of trading. You see, there are four asset classes equities, currencies, commodities, bonds. Chances are it's the same traders money which is floating around in various asset classes. Now you could say that you created compartments in your brain and each asset class is being handled by a separate portion of the brain. In theory, it works fine. It works fine. But in practice, Start taking a beating in any one asset class and you start to question the uh, decisions that you took in the other three asset classes as well. So the psychological feeling of discomfort, distress and possibly rethink and redo of what you've done 
has to hit you. It's but natural. Now, once one asset class is coming down and in the recent past, you will realize that commodity prices have been coming down. And if you've been connecting with me on social media since a while, you will know that I have been debunking the very basis of the bull market in commodities, which is being attributed to a super cycle. I have uh, put up hyperlinks of many of my videos saying the commodity super cycle is nothing but a figment of somebody's imagination, creative imagination. So commodity prices started coming down. Traders who had exposure to commodities and equities took a beating in commodities, withdrew their money and are now very careful, skeptical and scared trader in equities. They might even pull out money in equities. This is how multi-asset class and cross-market analysis behavioral uh, studies will help you take better informed decisions. If there is distress in uh, uh, one asset class, can that distress come to another asset class also? Hey, the answer is yes. It will come to the other asset class because the guy who is investing money in both these markets probably is the same guy or the same fund or the same institution or the same portfolio management service provider. So it's bound to have an impact. Don't forget at the end of the day, there is a pull push effect of one asset class on the other and all these asset class are married to each other. They are in bed with each other. So the pull push impact will pull prices even further down. Would you want to buy in such a market when one asset class is pulling the other down and the other will pull the first one even lower? As a trader, the answer should be no. Let the market bottom out. Let it show some signs of gaining some kind of confidence, flatten out and then attempt to at least overcome one previous swing high. You could say it's counterproductive because you will have to buy on the way up rather than buying cheap. But we as traders are not pioneers. We don't claim to catch the bottoms and the tops. Our job is to put food on the table for our family and win in markets, whether they are bull or bear. We do not have the luxury of long term thinking of three, four, five and ten years. You see, when you take a one year view, there are 12 months, 12 times your electricity bill has to be paid, 12 times you have to pay the salary of your domestic help, 12 times you will have to pay your monthly telephone bills. So cash flows are important and we therefore have to take a short term view. And in a falling market like this, when multi asset class declines are taking place, I for one don't suggest that you take uh, uh, the uh, way out of averaging because you might wind up throwing good money after bad. It's very simple. Wait for at least one previous peak to be overcome before you think of buying. On this cautionary but optimistic note, this is Vijay Bambani signing off for now, not before reminding you to click like on this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already done so. Good, bad or ugly, I welcome your feedback in the comment section and help me reach out to smart investors and traders like yourself by referring my video to your family and friends. Till we meet again in my next, this is Vijay Pambani signing off for now. Thank you for your patience. Have a profitable day. Bye-bye.